Hey everyone, welcome back. And let's talk about four pieces of important template syntax in Svelte 5. We have if, each, key, and await. So that's what we're gonna be covering. And let's hop into our first example here. As you see, we have a little bit of state here with that state rune. We have a setter function, and then we just have some on-click handlers that are, you know, adjusting that state. We are going to be using if blocks. Okay. Now this is going to open with a hashtag, but then for else if and else we have that colon. So something to keep in mind. And then we're going to close this if block with a slash. So, you know, just don't get that confused with this hashtag up here when we open it. And so, yeah, of course, we just have an expression. It's nothing crazy, very simple to understand. And as you see, as I'm, you know, updating uh, the weather value, you know, we're getting that nice reactivity. So you, what you got to understand here is that, you know, in the words of Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, Svelte is an extension of HTML. And so, you know, we get all of this kind of nice, you know, logic right in the HTML as kind of a representation of that. So that's a little kind of an example of each box. Now, take a look at this. This is really cool. This is just using an each block here and each tag essentially, and we're iterating over fruits, right? Nothing too crazy. Now, what's going on here is I can optionally, you know, name the index. So I could say index just like this, or I could just say I, I kind of prefer that, or we could just not use an index at all. This is kind of what we get out of the box. And we can obviously name this part whatever we want. Now, this right here is the key identifier. So, you know, that's really going to kind of help Svelte in a sense with re-rendering and just kind of making those DOM changes a little more efficient, but you don't necessarily need to add this. So, you know, it's good practice, but just know it's not an absolute requirement. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, another thing that we could do here is we could go ahead and destructure which is really cool. So I'm going to say ID name color, just like that. And then I can go ahead and get rid of that first part, right? Of fruit. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Perfect. And you know what? Um, I am also going to add an index just to kind of get that on the board for you. So let me go ahead and put in I here. Great. And as you see, the index is truly working. Okay, so that's just kind of like each blocks and things like that. So, all right, this is really cool. And essentially what we're doing here is we're kind of just like simulating a request or, you know, simulating, you know, creating a promise in a sense. And when we use await, this is a great way to rely on promises to direct our UI. So let me go ahead and just refresh this page here. Okay. And you're going to see we have loading and then it's going to give us a completely different message, which is defined right here once this is resolved. So this is a really, really cool technique and a really cool piece of syntax. And as you see, it's following the naming conventions of you know, those methods that we have on promises. So, you know, kind of like the dot then dot catch. Well, we get that in this template syntax, which is super cool. So, you know, something to consider if you have a kind of an, an outstanding promise and you want that to direct your UI, these blocks may be a good choice for that. So something to consider. Now, the last thing we're going to be talking about here is key blocks or key tags in a sense. And this is really cool because this is going to force a re-render. Okay. And if you have any, you know, piece of animation that's kind of tied to whatever is in this key block, well, this is going to be really good for that because key blocks essentially are going to destroy and recreate the elements that are in here. So let's go ahead and go to the documentation and you're going to say key blocks destroy and recreate their contents when the value of an expression changes. And they give a really good recommendation of adding a transition. And if you haven't ever worked with the transitions in Svelte, it is incredible. Everyone loves the transitions. You have a ton of, 
you know, control over them, which is fantastic. So, you know, Svelte really did us right with transitions. And so uh, that's something that they suggest um, if that's something you want to include in your application. And overall, these can be really, really handy, and especially when like managing local state. So I hope those helped. If it did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.